All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. We're ready for another exciting adventure of the sea in our thrilling story, which takes place in the year 1860. In our last episode, Johnny and Sue, along with Captain Dalton, Old Dickon, Sue's brother Ezra, and all the rest of the crew of the Paul Parrot, set sail from the islands of Tristan de Cunha on the last leg of their journey home. But while they were in Tristan, they met a very disagreeable captain of a merchantman named Karsh, who, strange to say, had his supposed merchant vessel equipped with full-sized cannon. Dickon hasn't trusted him from the start, because he thinks Karsh is really a privateer. And when the Paul Parrot finally leaves the harbor and sails north, homeward bound, the Africana, Karsh's ship, puts on full sail and follows. This is doubly suspicious, because Karsh was supposed to be sailing for South Africa, and also because Karsh has apparently guessed that there is a very valuable cargo on board the Paul Parrot, because it's sailing home and it doesn't carry much whale oil. And of course we know there is a very valuable treasure aboard, those rough diamonds from the island of Galto. As we see our friends again, the Paul Parrot is fairly flying through the waves with the Africana in what is now openly full chase. And Johnny and Sue are talking to Dickon. There's no doubt of it now anymore, Dickon. That Captain Karsh is really after us. Hi, Johnny, lad. I knew from the very beginning that swab was a blooming privateer. Oh, he's a pirate. He's a pirate. Oh. The only thing I can't understand is why Captain Dalton is running away. Blow me down, Sue. What do you mean? I mean, that is... Well, it just isn't like Captain Dalton not to stand and fight. Now, there, Sue. Looks to me as if you've had so much excitement on this trip, you're always expecting people to start fighting, it does. You know, there's times when it don't pay to look for trouble. What do you mean, Dickon? Blow me down, lass. Now, hark ye to this. The Africana is twice as big as the Paul Parrot. Therefore, there must be twice as many men aboard her. Then, too, she's equipped with regular naval cannon. And all we has in the form of arms is rifles and pistols. He's right, Sue. It would be suicide if Captain Dalton just pulled up to face him and fight it out. I guess that's true, but how is it that that awful Karsh hasn't fired at us if he really wants to take us? If you ask me, lass, he wants to overtake the ship, not sink it. You may lay to that. And since the Afrikan is so much bigger than the Paul Parrot, well, he thinks it's only a matter of time before he catches up to us anyhow, he does. We've surely been keeping ahead of him, though. Johnny, lad, there's not another whaling vessel on the seven seas that could have kept ahead of him as long as the trim little Paul Parrot has. But how long we can keep this up, well, I'll be blowed if I knows. Oh, Dickon, look. Look, he's suddenly joined up on us. Batten, tell me, that's your right. He's got all part of a headwind, and he's creeping up like a blooming cat on a mouse. Well, if we have to, I'll fight with the rest of the men. Johnny, you mustn't. You might get hurt. Now, that's the young'uns. There'll be time enough to think of fighting when they catch us. And we ain't caught yet, we ain't. Oh, there's a cannonball. They're firing at us. Not out at us yet, lass. That shot was across our bows, signaling us to stop. But if we don't stop, they may start firing at us and not around us. Gosh, if we only had some cannons to fight back. Oh, here comes Captain Dalton. He looks awfully worried. And he's with my brother Ezra. Mr. Grange, this is the most difficult decision of my days at sea. If I were alone on this ship with my crew, I'd stand and fight. I know you would, Captain. But with little Sue and you and Johnny aboard, sir, well, I have no right to practically throw away the lives of my passengers in a fight where our chances are only one out of ten. If it were only for me, Captain, I'd say go ahead and fight. But Sue here... I'll hide, Ezra. I won't get hurt. But don't let them take us. I'll help you fight, sir. I can handle a gun. I lad, you're as brave as they come, but it won't do. We haven't a chance against them. There's nothing to do, as I can see, but haul, sail, and surrender. Captain! Captain! That one took part of our forward railing. Oh, it's war, men! It's war! They mean business all right. You may lay to that. The next one will be to disable us. Well, after all, Captain, there isn't much they can do to us, is there? We have the diamonds hidden, and remember at best... Captain Karsh can only suspect we have the valuables aboard. He doesn't know about the diamonds. Aye, that's true. I've been thinking that. The best they can do is board us. Lash me to a yard on, Captain. That poor skimmed the four deck. Aye, blasted. It looks like the time has come to heave to. Avast, all hands. Take in sail. Stand by to put them out. Stand by to drop anchor. I'm afraid the men may not like the idea of giving in without a struggle. They're following my orders, Mr. Grange. They'll do as I say. Can't be helped. All hands stand by to defend the ship if the other crew gets any ideas of piracy. Mr. Wainwright, have all arms brought on deck for immediate use. If 
least, Mr. Grange, we won't let them massacre us. They're drawn close aboard a second, Captain. There's Captain Kosh hanging over the rail with a speaking trumpet. He's hailing us. There, Phileas Lobb. We've played our little game long enough. Stand by for a boarding party. By whose authority? By my own authority, blast you. If you don't surrender peaceable, I'll rake that hulk of yours from stem to stern with great shock. We'll stand by since we have no choice. But let me warn you, Kosh, my men are armed. And at the first sign of violence on your part, we'll shoot you and as many of your men as we can before you wipe us out. Agreed, Mr. Dalton. There'll be no firing by either side until you hear our terms. Stand by now. I'm putting down the dollies and coming aboard. Oh, my. What was that? More cannon? No less. That was thunder. From the looks of them slate-colored clouds, there's squalls ahead. Gee, that's all we need. Caught by a privateer, and then it looks like a storm ahead. The waves are very calm, though, Dickon. Blow me down, lad. Don't let that fool you. In the South Seas, that'd be the forerunner of a hurricane. Mr. Buscara, let down the rope's end and the rope ladder. The Africanus dory is hard aboard. Men, stand close by the firearms. Now, don't pick them up, but be ready to use them if real danger threatens. Captain, here comes Kosh and his men up the ladder. Ah. Oh, hi, my pets. We meet again, eh? And how are you, Captain Sea Lawyer Dalton? Stow the talk, Kosh. Let's hear your terms. We know we're outnumbered, but it's only because I won't risk the lives of these passengers that we've let you board us without a fight. We're powerless to win from you, but if it comes to choice between massacre and honorable death, we'll fight to the last man aboard. Just so you understand. Oh, Kosh. pretty little speech indeed, Dalton. Well, my heart, Amy, terms are brief and to the point. Where's those diamonds? What diamonds? What are you talking about? Oh, Johnny, how did he find that out? I can't imagine Sue unless... Listen. Oh, you needn't start any fancy pretending, all of you. I can see by the look on your faces I took you by surprise, didn't I? I know all about your finding a diamond mine on the island of Golto. I know all about your getting off the island just before that earthquake sunk it. And I want them diamonds, and I'll be on my way. You're crazy, man. You don't know what you're talking about. Come, come now. You would be even more surprised to know that I have got aboard the Africana, one of the men who was on that island when she sunk. You probably thought they was all dead, didn't you? Who? Who is it? Ah, who is it, he says. Him that didn't know what I was talking about. Wouldn't you like to know? It might be one of Dirk Briscoe's crew. Oh, Johnny, it might be Red Mulhooly himself. No, lass, it ain't, Red. Captain Dalton shot him dead on a doornail, and I seen it with me very own eyes. Yes, talk, I ain't getting anywhere. Do I get those diamonds? My answer's just as brief. You do not. Avast! Look, Captain, there's two more boatloads of men coming over the side. Ahoy, what's the meaning of all these men boarding us, Kosh? Order them to stand where they are, or I'll have my men pick up those rifles. With all my men armed? We'll go for your fancy passengers here first if you make a move toward us, Dalton. Mr. Sea Lawyer. Sort of figured you'd be stubborn about those diamonds. So I came aboard prepared to search for them. And just to be sure you don't try to play any fancy tricks on us, I'm going to send some of your men over on my ship to be held as hostages until we get through. They'll jump you at the drop of my hand, Kosh. Go on, drop your hand. And there'll be bullets in the ears of that blinking boy and girl standing there and that blasted ship owner of yours quicker than you can reef a spinnaker. Mr. Grange, I've got to do as he says. I can't let you be harmed. I don't think they'll find the diamonds for some time anyhow. And meanwhile, we may think up some way out of this. I realize your hands are tied, Dalton. It's your decision that will decide. You're master of the Paul Parrot. Thank you, Mr. Grange. All right, Kosh. I'll send ten men over to your ship. Mr. Hollings, Aye, sir. take ten men with you and go back in one of those dories to the Africana. Aye, I wonder why Captain Dalton is sending Hollings. He was one of the privateers on Goto Island. And not one of our original crew at all. But, Sue, remember, he's the one who saved the diamonds for us. He's a very brave man, and maybe Captain Dalton already has something in mind. Some kind of a plan. Captain Dalton, sir. If you don't mind, sir, it looks like a bad blow coming up. Men, fix the lifelines. Man all ports, ready for squall. Hold fast there. There'll be no tricks under my nose. My men will take care of this ship. Look alive, you swabs. Reef in this old tub to weather the storm. And I take a look about in the captain's quarters for those diamonds. Bruno! Bruno! 
Annabelle. What in the name of Davy Jones are you doing aboard this house? Blow me, don't look. It's a young woman. I came aboard with the last boatload of your men. I made them bring me. Now, look here, Annabelle. You may be my betrothed, but you can't be poking your nose into my affairs like this. Get back in that dory and I'll have your road back. Bruno, you wouldn't tell me what this strange business is all about. You told me you'd stop privateering years ago, but this certainly doesn't look like it. I had to come over here to find out what you're doing to these people. Why did you send a boatload of their men back to your ship? Annabelle, if you were already my wife, I'd beat you with a belaying pin for this. Oh, that you swine. That's no way to talk to any lady. At least all your betrothed, as I take it, this young woman is. Oh, Johnny, that beautiful girl is going to marry that awful Captain Cars. Captain! Captain Dalton! Avast! A wall of water sweeping down on us! It's a hurricane! Cars! Cars! Get your betrothed bride and as many of your men below as aren't needed. This is a terrible blow coming up. My men will take over and we'll settle our arguments after we ride out the storm. We will not... I'm in command here now, and my men have taken over. And I've even put my mate at your elm. Oh, hi there! Why, what's the idea, you slob? I told you to take over the elm when we got aboard. You're letting this ship drift away from ours. Fly me, sir, I can't help it. The anchor rope's seven and we drifted apart. Who cut that anchor light? Wouldn't you like to know? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Everybody but the men on duty. In another second, the decks will be completely awash. Blast you! I tell you, I am in command. Me, you at the L. Hold her steady. She's putting about right into the wind. When trouble comes to the Paul Parrot, it comes in bunches. First, they're caught by the privateer Karsh. They lose part of their crew as hostages. Then they get caught in an awful storm with two rival skippers on board and two crews. And on top of it all, they lose their anchor and their rudder. And if they do ride out the storm safely, what about all those other new problems? Who told Karsh about the diamonds? Who is the survivor from Galto Island aboard the Africana? Who is this lovely young woman who seems to be Karsh's promised bride? Will Karsh find the diamonds? Why did Captain Dalton send Hollings to lead the hostages to the Africana? The only way we can solve all these riddles is to listen for the next episode in the transcribed production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot. Until then, this is your Paul Parrot announcer saying goodbye. <laughs>